at Britain's supreme cat show, the celebrities are groomed for stardom. Even the cages are dressed up. Nowhere does adoration of the domestic cat reach such dizzy heights as in the show ring. Cat shows are a serious business. They're feline beauty contests and not to everyone's taste. Cat shows became an instant success, but Weir soon resigned as president of the National Cat Club, complaining that the prizes had become more important than the cat's welfare. No, no, that, no, the poor, poor cat. No, 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 no. No, no, that, no, the poor, poor cat. Please don't treat him so. He was out last night in two, but he likes the cuddle just the same as you. Cat breeding produced undeniably beautiful animals, but also some changes. The silky angora became the fluffy Persian, with its flatter face and nose. This stuffed cat was called Trilly. It lived at the war office at the turn of the century. And when it died, it was brought here to the vaults of the Natural History Museum in London, where it's been ever since. Now, cats like Trilly are very useful because they give us valuable evidence that in the early days of cat shows, Persians had good, long noses. But today, things are very different. This peak-faced Persian at an American show has an almost flat nose. The cat's buckled tear ducts cause the eyes to continually overflow, and it has breathing difficulties. In Britain, we consider this is breeding taken too far. But in America, it often wins top honours. Many other Persian-type cats have a similar appearance. Unfortunately, showing can lead to extremes. Just because a breeding standard specifies a short nose, it shouldn't be a case of the shortest winning. After centuries of independence, these cats need combing every day. We're breeding for dependency, selecting kittenish, flatter faces, surrogate children who will never grow up. Are you helping me? He likes to help. We're in danger of turning cats into toys. The ancient Siamese has also changed. When they first arrived as gifts from the King of Siam in the late 19th century, they were quite chunky. Yet compared to British moggies, they were thought sinuous and slender, as well as exotically marked. By the 1930s, they'd become established as the most popular short hair show cats in Britain. But in the last 30 years, this oriental cat was deemed not oriental enough. Breeders began moving away from the original build by selecting much thinner cats. Here in the United States too, the Siamese was the most popular short hair show cat. And yet over the last few years, the unthinkable has happened. They've all but disappeared from the American show bench. So what's gone wrong? The search for a dainty cat has led to a frail animal with inevitable health and breeding problems. For me, this is one of the saddest stories in the history of cat breeding. Where once there were scores of Siamese at major American shows, now there are only one or two. The cat's welfare was sacrificed for the sake of fashion. Yes. I want to put this on my cat. How do I do this? Straps through the loop, put it over their ears, bring it underneath the chin, and Velcro it. And there you have a very stylish kitty. Oh, it looks so cute. Oh, it looks great. And I'll take five of them. <laughs> All five of my kitties.
Cat number 443 needed in ring nine. Cats from breeders are becoming a larger part of the population as most pet animals are now neutered. And as fashions change, so do the cats. does cat weigh? 22 pounds. 22 pounds. <laughs> he's uh, half plain point Siamese, half Persian. Oh, he's about as big as me. Yeah, he's much bigger than my dog, I'll tell you that. <laughs> In America particularly, there's been a trend since the 1950s towards weirdness. This is the Scottish Fold, a mutation not accepted in Britain, but recognized in the United States. Its ears are deformed flat against its head. In the American Curl, the ears are bent permanently backwards. In Britain in 1950, the Cornish Rex was taken up for the novelty value of its crimped coat. But it must be kept away from cold weather. It was followed in 1960 by the Devon Rex. Even its whiskers are crimped. This is a Selkirk Rex. The coat is the most fantastic thing you've ever touched. It's curly, but it's long hair. A brand new Rex with curly long hair. For many, a more acceptable coat change. But this is also a cat. It's the Sphinx. Totally naked, no fur, no whiskers, and it must be kept warm. Sphinx male, 11 months old, showing good development. Absolute hairlessness, good bone structure, good stop at the face, nice wrinkling, absolute hairlessness, very nice. Nice to some, but that such an abnormal animal is bred at all deeply offends many people. What is it? This is a munchkin. But what's a munchkin? They're the little people of the cat world. They have short legs, they're built very much like a dachshund and a or a corgi, and there's good evidence that this may be the same gene that we actually are seeing in the shorter leg breeds of dogs. The dog fancy and people who have had dogs accept a wide range of variation, whereas in cats, we've bred within relatively short confines. We change ears, we change tails, we change the coat, but this is a very radical departure from what we would expect a cat to look like. The munchkin is the most startling physical change so far. This stumpy-legged cat can neither jump nor run with the same dexterity as other cats. Breeders are also changing the cat's behavior. The rag doll was developed in California by Ann Baker. It gained its name by going limp when handled. You see, the cats are not what they look like, their temperament and disposition. You see this here? Sure put up a lot. Yeah. Now you catch, see? Okay. All right. Hi there. Good around children and oh yeah see children can do anything with it they can dress it up in doll clothes take it for a ride in a buggy and all that kind of stuff now, one is like this the ultimate docile cat a cushion cat are we in danger of losing the spirit of the cat in exchange for a soft living toy here i'm gonna throw him back to you and see if he reacts the same way to you okay oh <laughs> there see you see what a pretty kitty he is they sure put up a lot yeah. The story of the dog offers a warning for the cat's future. Working dogs were always selected for fitness. But when selection was just for show, appearance without function, it led to genetic disasters. Today's bulldogs, with their huge short heads, have breathing and breeding difficulties. The bloodhound show standard demands loose skin to pull down the eyelids, but that inflames the eyes and causes infections. The basset hound's tendency to arthritis in its stubby legs casts a shadow on the outlook for the munchkin. A pet cat playfully chewing your hand is one thing. A domestic cat the size of a leopard or lion is a different story. And it could happen. 
So far, only the cat's size has not changed significantly. It may be only a matter of time before this occurs by a mutation or crossbreeding. We have Rottweilers as pets, despite a genetic selection for aggression. So who would challenge the inevitable insanity of huge house cats? The cat has successfully managed its own breeding over the thousands of years since domestication. Yet in the brief time under our control, are we in danger of ruining it? <laughs> 